So yesterday, well, in relativity to recording this, Zelda.com officially announced the details regarding the first DLC pack for Breath of the Wild. So in this video, I'm just gonna go through the article itself and express my concerns and thoughts about this new DLC pack. And just a fair warning right away, there are gonna be spoilers for Breath of the Wild. So if you haven't beaten the game yourself, this is a fair warning. So the first thing mentioned in the article is the Trial of the Sword. It states that when you get to a certain sacred location, you can take the new Trial of the Sword challenge. I'm assuming by sacred location, the article means where you get the Master Sword in the Lost Woods in front of the Deku Tree. Apparently the Trial of the Swords is about 45 rooms in total, uh, where you start out with no equipment and you just fight through the entire thing. And at the end, you get the Master Sword in its completely powered up state. Usually the Master Sword only does about 30 damage, uh, but when it's fully powered up and glowing, it does 60, which is double the usual amount. I never really understood the correlation of how to get it from 30 damage to 60, like in its glowing state. I always thought I had to have it equipped, but like in its sheath, or maybe just have it in my inventory and not use it. I never really understood the correlation because it seemed that when I got to Hyrule Castle, it was fully powered up. That might've been a coincidence, but I honestly think that the first thing I'm gonna do is try out the Trial of the Sword. The next feature mentioned in the article is the Hero's Path mode. This map feature allows the player to see where Link has been in Hyrule for the past 200 hours. I don't think I put 200 hours of gameplay into my first playthrough of Breath of the Wild. I would say maybe 70, 80 hours of gameplay. So I think this is gonna be really efficient in helping you find secrets and other things. I think this is gonna be incredibly helpful for helping you find locations that you didn't necessarily find on other playthroughs, or it'll help you find other locations that you haven't really looked at for things like shrines, Koroks, or just camps in general where there's Bokoblins and stuff. I really like this. This is a really clever idea. If Skyrim had something like this, this would be awesome. Uh, next is hard mode, and this is something I think I'm gonna love. Uh, in hard mode, enemies gradually regain health. All enemies are po also powered up by one level. So red bokoblins in normal mode are blue bokoblins. Enemies can also have a higher maximum level than they would in normal mode. And apparently, you can find enemies in chests in the sky. That... <laughs> I really like that idea. Can you imagine like there's a it's like a flying bow coblin, right? And you just pop the balloons with your arrows and he falls to his death. I, th I think that'd be really funny. The travel medallion is the next feature mentioned, which I don't even think this was mentioned in the DLC pack details when it was first announced. Uh, somewhere in the world, there's a chest with a travel medallion inside. When you use this, you can register your current location as a fast travel point on the map. That's really cool. There are some areas in Breath of the Wild that don't have a nearby fast travel area. Like, let's say you're in Hyrule Castle. I don't think it'll, I honestly don't think it'll apply in dungeons, but I'm hoping that like you can set it just outside Hyrule Castle and then come back later once you beat all of the Divine Beasts. Now this next feature is the thing I am the most excited about. There are now eight extra pieces of armor available throughout Hyrule. The Majora's Mask, Midna's Helmet, an entire set of Phantom Armor, and Tingle's Outfit. The Majora's Mask and Midna Helmet kinda just seem like aesthetic things. They don't really seem like the type of thing that would have, you know, an ability. But I honestly think that the full Phantom Armor set will probably lower your speed but increase your defense by a lot. And I feel like Tingle's Outfit will have something to do with fairies, maybe increase fairy spawn rates or something like that. I think that my favorite thing about the Tingle outfit is that <laughs> Link looks so unhappy <laughs> in this set of armor. This He looks so unhappy in this outfit. He looks like he just walked in on his wife with another man. Like, I just, I'm, I, I just think it's really funny. <laughs> Look at his bulge! And they also included the Korok mask, which is an incredible idea because there's over, I think over 900 Koroks within the Breath of the Wild map, uh, but no way to detect them. Like you could use, like you can use a shrine detector, you know? But instead of a shrine, you're finding Korok puzzles, which I think is really cool. I think that that's, that, that is incredibly cool. And so that's just the first DLC pack. I'm incredibly excited to see what's going to come up in DLC pack two. I wasn't exactly taken back by anything that was mentioned in this article, but uh, it really does make me excited for the next DLC pack that's going to come out. So this DLC pack is coming out in summer, which is not that far away. So that'll hopefully get me back into Breath of the Wild because I have slowed down on how much I've been playing it. All right, so thank you for joining me as I detail the new DLC pack in Zelda. Uh, if you guys are excited about this, let me know down below. And if you want to see more videos like this where I just talk about gaming news, let me know as well. Uh, thanks a lot. Until next time. Oh shit, psych! End slate update. 
So if you follow me on Twitter, you know I'm just learning the basics of Adobe Premiere, the industry standard. But because I'm a big foreheaded Neanderthal, it's taking a bit of time to get used to the change. I appreciate everyone who's patient with me during this process, and I can assure you that there will be some dizzy dank content just around the corner. Until next time, 